everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So I've received these two new products from Simply Made Crafts and this is the doctor's bag. So you've got dies there to make. It's really nice actually, I've loved this one. And this makes a suitcase. So what usually happens is I share the new product and I show you the samples that I've made and then they get sent off to Craft Stash to use for the shows and the launches and so on. But I always get messages from you all asking how to make the actual you know um, samples that I've shared so what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to also show you how to make the doctor's bag now the suitcase is wonderful I'll show you my sample in a moment but it's very self-explanatory the step-by-step -step instructions on the back are easy to follow and you will know how to do it when you die cut everything you can see how it all goes together now I do have something similar to this that I made a couple of years ago it's thinner and it was to put the journal, the travel journal in, which so many people have enjoyed to make, but you can just make the box on its own. And I will link that up here because I know a lot of people don't have access to get the dies or maybe you don't have die machines and you like to score and, and make you know, your 3D projects. And that's totally understandable, which is why I like to give people the options. So just head over there and maybe you'll like the colors that I've done today's in and you can incorporate them into that tutorial. But this one here is something quite different because you're working with curves and that's quite hard to really show in a tutorial and to cut yourself because usually people would you know someone's curve might be slightly wider than the next person so it's it can be a little bit more difficult to actually put into a tutorial so this one to have in a die form was really really nice and this is what I've made and I absolutely love it I think it's just wonderful you've got the zip detail on the back these are all um, velcro fastening and then you open it up and you have a really nice roomy gift bag. So, I mean, you know, I have done this one with the, you know, uh, the, the real kind of doctor's bag style in mind because that's just what I just thought to do. I love, you know, that you could have the, the person's name um, like inscribed on here. That's, you know, what I've kind of thought doing this. But I'm going to show today's using some really nice pattern papers just so you can see it in a different way. But look at all the detail. Now, this back piece is an extra addition because I stuck it down and it wasn't in the center. So I ripped it up and it ripped up the cardstock. So I added this panel, which I think you would never know that there was a mistake under there because it's that kind of style. I even like these strips here. This is all part of the set. Um, you know, even that piece that's behind the, the zip there you get two different kind of zip pulley parts you've got the lovely buckle detail there the handle and then you can see how it's all curved on the corners here and I just think it looks really really awesome so that's that one and then to show you the suitcase is this one here and then there's the tag so if I just bring that one up I'll show you how the dies actually look as well but you've got the big tag here as well but you've also got this other kind of tag and then I've just used silver on the other side there but I've kind of split them apart so you can write a message inside and again this one you have your velcro and then you just open up oh, got a bit of glue stuck there there we go and you have a really nice size gift bag Again, so many, you know, wonderful ways to theme this project. You know, you could have it for a little boys or girls um, party. You could have it as a farewell gift, like I kind of done with a mini album in for, well, it was, it was a travel journal. And lots of people did actually message me and say that their daughter is going traveling or their grandchild or whatever. And they gave it to them as a gift for them to be able to, docu to document their traveling experiences. So I thought that was really nice. But I just think it's it's wonderful. It really is very, very sweet. And you get all these lovely corners, which I've done in the silver to just look like they're metal. And then again, with the, the kind of detail there with the, the straps and the, the buckles and stuff. So like I said, I'm not gonna show you how to make that one because it is just two of the same size on each side. You've got a hinge that you put together and then you just decorate with all the elements. So that one's very straightforward. Now, that is how that one also looks. So you would need a larger um, die cutting machine for both of these. You can see there what you get and where the buckles are. And um, these are, that's the corner piece there and so on and so forth. So that's that one. Okay, so this is the doctor's bag. Now my papers, I'm actually going to make this one for a baby shower. So I have this gorgeous paper pad, which is the Little Miracle by Dress My Craft. Um, you would have seen me use this one for my die cutting plate storage. But um, today I'm going to pull out this beautiful vintage print for the sides and then for the front of the actual 
bag I've got this one here which just has lots of different sayings on the front I'm not sure whether I'm going to do all the detail in craft card or white card so I've die cut everything twice because whatever I don't use I'll keep with the dies to use on another project so that's the papers I'm going to talk you through what you need to die cut and how many of them you need so we'll start from the main ones and we'll just kind of explain you know because you probably can't really see the score lines on this but you will have this large one here and it does have step by step on the back as well but sometimes you know it's just quite handy just to watch a video so you would want to die cut two of the largest one and you'll see that there's a thicker section here at the top and then a thinner at the bottom here the thinner end is where you're going to join each one together so die cut two of them and then I can see here actually I've just realized what I've done because, have I done it on both? No, see that one I've done the right way because I want my paper, actually, no, it's going to work out. No, it's going to be fine. So you will want to make sure that your papers, if it's directional like mine, make sure that you have the larger end at the top. Okay, so just pop that one in there. So I've got mine at the top there. I'm just going to actually rescore mine just so they're the same because it's only a score line. So you just want to fold and burnish, but you don't want to do the the bottom end, you, there's no need to. I'm just going to quickly score the score lines where I need them to be on this one. So it's actually half an inch, so that's really good. Just make sure you, you do it the right way up. If not, you know, it's not the end of the world, just do what I did there. So there's my half an inch at the top, and then you'll have the quarter inch at the bottom, but you don't need to fold that one. So what will happen is you're going to stick one of them over the other, just covering that whole section there. So we'll stick that together in a moment and then you want to die cut two of the side pieces here Okay, so like I said, I've got this really pretty pattern paper and I just moved the die around on the paper to find The kind of images that you know, I thought would fit best in this You'll see I've made sure the baby's in there the cat the little children there the guy in the the guy You know the little <laughs> little baby in the bath and the writing there so do two of those and then what you want to try and do is just burnish all around the sides and there's your little corner tabs and then you're, you've got these score lines here which are the triangular ones there you just want to make them both valley folds what I also find helps is and just go around there just fold all them in quickly you want this box you want the sides to to go like that you want that rounded side if I bring this one in again here can you see it kind of rounds off so just to help it kind of go into that kind of way I've just found just curving you know the card a little bit it will just then naturally go into that position so you've got these in a valley fold and you can see there the side coming together so again with this one here because I haven't done that just just curve it a little bit like so and then I can just you know burnish everything as normal as well they are score lines so now you can see how you've got your sides coming together there so get those all die cut first and then all of these bits we will add on shortly and I'll show you those bits from that in a moment okay so I've just ran some glue along the quarter inch section there and I'm just sticking this one over the top now Helen does recommend the Helen designs the dies she has recommended to use hot glue so you know have a look see what works best for you and um, you know go from there I'm going to stick with the liquid glue I just feel you know comfortable using that make sure that's all dry and then what will happen is this is now going to become the base of the gift bag and these sides are going to come up and you will see that your directional paper will face the right way on both sides now what's going to happen is you want one of these and you basically want to make sure you're going to add glue to this bottom piece first of all okay this bottom tab don't worry about these bits for the moment just focus on this tab here you want to add glue and you want to stick it so that it's overhanging this middle score line evenly okay so the best way to do it again I'm just going to use my liquid glue because it just does give me that little bit of wiggle time now if you would rather put a pencil mark where this you know the center is and, and so on I'm just going to eyeball it I've made one already so I, you know I'm, I feel okay doing it this way but you can see here you can also use your grid so I'm just laying down that 
you know, centre there. Or maybe just put it a little bit over because it's that quarter inch. So, and then I can just make sure that the width of this overhangs. So in my case, it's one, two, it's about two and a quarter inch overhang. And like I said, I've got a little bit of time to just move it around. But I can just see here, one, two, and I've got a little bit of overhang. And then one, two, yeah, it's about two and a half, two and a half inches, I'd say. Either way, you want to get it as bang on as you can. And then make sure that this one opposite is the same. And what I would say here is, oh, well, I'll show you now, I'm going to measure this one and I will put a pencil mark on that one because you do want to make sure that both of these are exactly the same. So I'm just going to measure, so this side here is just over two and a quarter. So from that same point, just over two and a quarter, I'm just going to put a pencil mark there. That's all I need to do. And now I know that when I add glue to the bottom of this one, that this end, I just need to line up with that two and a quarter. And that then means that they will line up perfectly. And then the rest of it will as well. So you don't need to do both. But I'm just going to add my glue. Again, if I just flip this around. And just lay that down. And you want to make sure that you get it, you know, so it's coming right up to the edge of here. So those are now both stuck down and you'll see this is going to curve up, it's going to stick to the tabs and then you'll have, it's going to come up higher than this which is completely, you know, it's how it needs to be. But you'll now start to see when that comes around how lovely this is all going to come together. So this is the next step. You want to add your glue, I keep that folded back and I add my glue along here and you can see how high up that tab comes so I can just put my finger there just roughly up to here but I just prefer adding the glue onto this if you want to add it onto the tabs itself then you know you can do but I am going to just add my glue directly onto here and then I'm just going to roll it up and you're rolling it nice and taut around those tabs. Once you get the knack of it and once you've done one you kind of will see how it all you know comes together. You just want to keep everything straight, try not to get my head in shot. Like I said, get it all lined up, pushing inside that corner with my finger. And this glue grabs pretty quick so it doesn't take too long. But now You'll see you've got your corner and it's all stuck. And then you can lie it down this way and just, you know, really go in there. And make sure that's nice and secure. But you want to make sure that, that all of those tabs are joined. So you may, you know, want to use hot glue for these detail pieces here and then go into liquid glue. You may want to use red liner tape you know, and run your tape along here. What, you know, find what works best for you because we've all got different ways of doing things. So again, I'm going to just fold that back and then add my glue all the way up, roughly to the same kind of end, top there. And then again, sit this in, make sure it's running nice and flush with the outside edge. And kind of maybe just do the glue at the bottom first, let the corners grab and then add glue and continue up to the top. Like I said, I've, I've made this already, so I feel confident, confident, confident doing it this way. But just take your time with it because it's so nice when it's done. Okay, so now I can bring in the sides here and you've already got the bag coming together. Isn't it sweet? It looks so lovely with these papers and I think once I start to add the straps and everything it's going to come along really nice. So I'm now going to do the same with this side so you just want to kind of go under the tabs there. I find these last ones easier because the box has already now started to take its shape so it actually holds you know I think much better. So you should have these two half inch tabs, they will go inside the box like this. 
Okay, so if I just bring it around, you can see that shape. So now it's the fun of part of adding all of this decoration. So again, I'll bring in the dies just so you can understand what all the pieces do. This one here is your zip, and this here is the, the kind of frame for the zip, okay? And then these are two different kind of little pulleys you have for the zip. So you'll see this one, I've done the rounder one. And then today I'm going to do the slightly more kind of um, pointier one, which is this one here. So you can see the two different styles. So that one is just going to hang, you know, when, I do, when I've uh, cut it, which I have, <laughs> it's going to hang off like so. I mean, it's up to you how you have it, but I'm going to have mine like that. And then that will be framed around this piece here. Now I'm not sure, like I said, whether I'm going to use the craft card or white. So I've die cut everything twice because I don't know, I've got a feeling, I don't know the white, I'm going to play around. So that's what you want to do there, so die cut your zip. And these very thin ones, which is this die here, are to add like a hardware look along the very top. So if you look at doctor's bags, you'll see lots of them have this metal piece at the top that kind of snaps and keeps everything together. So that's to go along there and again you'll see where I've added the gold along the top there. So I've die cut two of those. Then the straps. So you want four of these. Two along the front and two along the back. Again it's optional, you might not want to do them. Again you'll see them there. They've got a stitch detail. Now all of this, if you want to distress it, you need to distress it before you stick it down. I'm not going to distress anything on this one because it's not really that style. But again you'll see here I've got, although it only looks like I've done three. <laughs> I've only done three of each one. So I'll have to die cut both of the colours anyway. But um, that's them there. And um, actually no, because I've done, I want one for the handle. So I'll die cut some more for that. But then you have got the handle, which is this one here, which sits on the back. But I've changed it slightly and I'm not using that one. I've actually die cut another one of these and I'm going to stick it inside like that. And that's what I've done on the other one. So again, that's completely optional. It's up to you how you want to do that. Then you've got these, which are the ends of the straps. So again, I've done two of each because I'm not sure what colour I'm doing, but you'll just need two. And they will attach kind of at the end of the strap from, you know, for example, there, the other side. So you imagine it's come over and this would be it here. It will go over the, the top like this. OK, so whatever colour you're doing, you want two of them and then you also want two of the buckles. Now, the buckle, you get this piece, you go up underneath and then you go over and down like so and then have it like maybe about there and you'll see you get that instant little buckle detail. So you want two of them, so I've done them in the silver. And then this here is the fastening over the middle. So I'm going to put a Velcro dot underneath and that's going to go over like so. So I've done those ones and you'll see it there. So you've got a fastening there and there. I like that, I like that you have all three, but you don't have to. And then this is just that kind of plaque or label. So I've got the silver finish, but I've also got brown. Now I've done so many because I actually stacked them on top of each other to create some dimension. Because again, I've had a doctor's bag style and it's quite a thick dimensional piece of leather that's there. So, you know, that's what you can see there. I've just die cut quite a few and stuck them together but again I'm not sure whether I'm going to have it with that or with the silver so that's what I've done but that's what they all are so this is yeah I've gone through all that like I said that's the handle and then oh this is the, the I don't think I showed the die for the strap that's it there I popped it on the back so I didn't have room to get it completely stuck to the magnet sheets there and it doesn't go that way so yeah you'll want four or even five if you're going to do the handle like I have so that's all in place, so I'm now going to start sticking it all down. Now what I would say, just to help you kind of to start off, is to get that centre one stuck down because it holds the box in place. And then from there you can build everything. But I'm just going to spend a minute just deciding whether I want to use white or craft card. So 
Okay, I think I'm going for white. <laughs> I'll spend too long, but I think I want this to be quite fresh and clean. You know, it's a baby shower. So I love this though. I do love the thought of the brown, but because I've got that brown one there, I'm going to keep all this for another, you know, project. Okay, so I am going to cut another one of those, but that's it. I've got everything. So I'm going to start sticking it all down and uh, yeah, make this look really lovely. But yeah, stick this one down first. I'll just show you this one actually. So I just popped a bit of glue on the back. Again, if you want to use a ruler so you know you've, where you've got your centre, because I did stick mine down initially and, um, you know, it wasn't quite there. So just line that up. So I've got what I've got there. Just over three and a quarter. I don't know, it needs to come this way a little bit. So three and a half. Oh, bang on. So you should have three and a half each side. So now I'm just going to fold that over. Let that glue just stick down. Just double check, three and a half. Yeah, it's bang on, it's three and a half you want to have on each side, and then that will be in the middle. And then these are the dot and dab. These are the um, 20 mil, really, really strong. So I'm gonna stick that underneath there. Again, bring everything together and stick that one down. You can just get your finger in there just to really make sure that's secure. And then lift it off and just make sure again that you're happy but now that will help you get everything in place because these you can slide that under there and stick it down there as long as you haven't glued up too much on that side you'll be able to get that one in just there you can see mine goes through fine so maybe just stick that one down first if you're worried but um, you'll see that that's all in place so I'm going to get them stuck and do everything else I've done the back now obviously it's up to you how you want to put this together but I have stuck for these straps so you know it's entirely up to you on this one here I think I've done the same yeah so have a play around you may want to have your straps you know right up here or you may not put the strap detail on the back and just have the zip detail it's up to you but I do like that it's on the front and the back so now I'm just going to add the handle and I'll show you what I'm going to do but I've also got my smaller velcro dots in fact that was these ones that I used so these are my 16 mil um, buckle pieces I'm going to come up a little bit higher just because there's a little bit more strength there I just do, yeah, I've done it right on there. So that's now all in place, so I can just lift them off. You'll be able to put something, you know, with a bit of weight on this, which is always nice. But I've got one of these longer ones again, I've die cut, but you do have the smaller strap there if you would prefer. And then I'm just gonna, I've just put a curl in it. Put your thumbs over the top like this and then bring it around to you so your thumbs are still, you know, on top. That's the easiest way that I always, because some people are like, how did you just do that? But it's just like so and just bring it towards you. And then you want to add glue to the backs. Just about, well, just, yeah, just over a quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to stick it in on those, that tab that hangs down inside the bag. But now I can push that in there. Stick all of that down like so. And there's your bag. Isn't that lovely? Right, and then this one I'm going to have about there. And I think that just sets it off so nicely. And I will personalise this as well, but I'll keep it plain for the video. 
but you can die cut some letters and pop the person's name in there, maybe the name of the baby. There we go. And this one will be sent off as a sample. So let me just bring in that one as well and pop it that way. But aren't they lovely? Really, really nice, large, you know, gift bag ideas. And like I said, I'll just show you these ones again. So this is the doctor's bag die set. You get 13 dies and then you've also got the suitcase there as well. So everything will be linked as always in the description below the video. And also head over to Helen's YouTube channel as well because she will have lots of inspiration using these as she always does. She'll also be on Craft Stash Live and no doubt this is also launching on Hachanda. So um, keep an eye out for all of that because there'll be loads of inspiration and other ways to, you know, make these with different papers and themes and colours and all that kind of stuff. And uh, this one would look lovely, which you'll see actually in the my video that I've linked, but put actual travel stickers on this just really does finish it off quite nicely so yeah there you have it so I hope you've enjoyed this kind of product share and tutorial just to give you some inspiration and I'll be back very soon with my normal tutorials and until then take care and I'll see you later bye